St. Mary's College, Biz Ed 123, Financial Management, JP Morgan, Take One, and Action. margin, non-interest income. The opportunities were techni technology investments, positive outlook for cards and payment channel in the U.S., and positive outlook for wealth market. And then the threats were the, uh, the competition, lower interest rate environments, and fiscal three norms on capital requirements. Okay, so for products and services, we broke it up into four different operations segments. And we took the dollar amount of revenue for each segment and divided by the total revenue to get the revenue contribution percentage. Um, it is 45% for consumer and community banking, 35% for corporate and investment banking, 8% for commercial banking, and 12% for asset and wealth management. And then we also broke down consumer and community banking into their business drivers, which includes consumer and community banking, credit card, commerce solutions, auto finance, mortgage banking, business banking, and consumer banking. So then just to take a look at their competition, um, currently J.P. Morgan Chase is ranked number one in the United States with total assets of 2.5 trillion. They are followed by Bank of America at 2.2, Wells Fargo at 2, Citigroup at 1.8, and Goldman Sachs at 0.9. So for the financial conditions, we evaluated J.P. Morgan to Bank of America's peer group and the industry. For return on equity, we rated them as excellent. For return on uh, assets, we rated them as good because they were right on with their peer group. For the net profit margin, we rated them as excellent because they're above both peer group and industry. For the asset turnover, we rated them as good because they're in line with their peer group. For the debt to equity, we rated them as good as well because they're a little under the peer group and a little bit under the industry. Uh, for price per earning, we uh, rated them as good uh, because they're right in line with their peer group, a little bit above. Uh, for the three-year revenue growth, we rated them as excellent. And for the three-year stock price appreciation, we rated them as excellent. So overall, we evaluated them as excellent. Than our current price of 98.6, with a premium of 20 
22%. So as you can see, we did the three-year chart and we found support lines here and here, resistance lines right here and here, a breakout to the upside right around here, an upward trend line, and then two trading ranges. And so we found that the RSI and the MACD, uh, there's a deceleration, and there's a falling trading volume with uh, trading sideways, if you look right about here, and high investor confidence, so we thought it was, there's an upward trend, as I mentioned before. All right, so moving on to the valuations, we have the perpetuity model. So for the CAPM model, we use a risk-free rate of 2.5%, a beta of 1.2, expected market value of 8%, and an R equity of 9%. And after figuring it all out, we used the 8% uh, at 92.5, which is the medium range. So we found the intrinsic value of nine, $92.5. Uh, $92.5 is lower than the current price of $98.6. So we found a discount of 6.3%. Okay, so moving on to Gordon Grove. Um, same thing with the cap and model, risk free rate of 2.5%, beta of 1.2. Thank you. 